This is a brief demo of the new Solver add-in, which is designed to work in Excel Online and Excel for iPad, as well as Excel 2013 and Excel 2016. This is the help and support page on Solver.com for the new Solver add-in. So here we're in Excel Online. We've opened a workbook in edit mode. And we loaded this workbook from uh, uh, the desktop where a solver model was created in the workbook using the solver that's included in Desktop Excel. This solver add-in can automatically recognize um, solver models that were created in Desktop Excel on Windows or Mac. So our first step is to insert the solver add-in. So we go to the Insert tab, Office Add-ins. And in this case, we'll have a recently uh, used instance of Solver. So we'll pick that and click Insert. And uh, the, task, the Solver now appears in a task pane. This new user interface is designed to work well on the iPad and on browsers with limited screen real estate. And as you can see, it's automatically recognizing the model that is already uh, defined in here from the standard Solver. Okay, so now by opening the accordion, we can examine the elements of the solver model. Uh, the objective is to maximize D18, which is profits. And then the decision variables are D9 to F9, that's the number of products to build of each type in this product mix model. And the constraints, there's non-negativity on the number of products to build. And then the main constraint is that the number of parts used from inventory cannot exceed the inventory of that kind of part that we have on hand. Here, uh, the sol this new version of the solver can diagnose the type of the model, linear, nonlinear, or arbitrary for the evolutionary solver. Um, ordinarily, this would appear as unknown, but recently in this session, we diagnosed the model, so it's currently showing as linear. Here, we can select the solving method or solver engine. Uh, three engines corresponding to the ones in the standard Excel solver are available. There are actually enhanced versions here. So we can also set solver options by clicking here. So these are the options for the LP quadratic solver. Click cancel. Here are the options for the nonlinear solver. And we can click cancel. And here are the options for the evolutionary solver. And again, I'll click cancel. Now to solve the model, which will require a trip to the backend server, we have to first make sure that the workbook in its current state has been saved. Autosaving occurs only about 30 seconds. So if we've changed anything in the spreadsheet itself or any of the solver options that are persisted in the model, then we should ensure that we uh, click File, Save As, and since there's no Just Save button, we'll replace this. Uh, that will save the model. And now we can simply click this arrow here to solve the model by sending the workbook to the backend server which runs the optimization and comes back with a solution message solver found a solution all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied there's a variety of other messages that could arise such as an infeasible solution and so on but the final solution in this case is placed in the workbook so this is the optimal number of products to build and this is the uh, maximized profit and we can see that the number of parts used in inventory always is less than or equal to the inventory that we have on hand. Finally, to show how we would define this solver model from scratch, first we can click the X uh, here which resets the model. It uh, essentially removes all the solver selections and resets options to their standard values. Then we can define each element of the model in turn. I'm clicking away from the objective here and then opening this part of the accordion, clicking here, clicking on the cell I want to use as the objective, and I'd set it to maximize. Now I can open the decision variables, click add since we can have multiple blocks, and then click in this uh, selector here and choose these three cells. Click OK. Now the variables are defined. Now I can open the constraints here and click add, and I'm going to do the same thing again, so I'm going to click here and, uh, and select these five cells to uh, be the left-hand side of constraints, all of which should be less than or equal to, clicking here, the inventory on hand, right-hand side of the constraints. Now I'll click the Add button, and I have one more constraint that I want to define, so I'll click here, 
select the variables, change the relation from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to, and then for the right-hand side, click 0, since we don't want to allow a negative number of products to be built. And with that, we have defined the solver model, and we can go ahead and solve it or diagnose it. So this concludes our little demo of the solver add-in.